Granoff, Chapter 6, Debt Service Funds, Why and How Governments Use Debt Service Funds. Overview. These funds account for and report financial resources that are restricted, committed, or assigned to expenditure for principal and interest on all general long-term debt. This does not include debt issued for and serviced by enterprise or internal service funds and some trust funds. Debt service funds are accounted for on the modified accrual basis. Here's an exception. Interest and principal are not considered current liabilities of the debt service fund until the period in which they must be paid, but the interest revenue on bonds held as investments is accrued. This actually puts the interest and principal payments on a cash basis. Debt service funds, the general rule, accrue interest at year end. Exception, interest and principal are not considered current liabilities until the period of which they're paid. The reason is that this generally matches the expenditure for interest and principal to the budget period of the appropriation. However, there is an exception to the exception. When the general fund appropriates resources for debt service in one year for payment early within one month in the next year, the state or local government may, but is not required to, accrue the expenditures and related liability at year end. The current year budget appropriates the interest in principal, but the payments are due within 30 days of the fiscal year. Example, assume bonds are issued January 1, 2016 and pay interest semi-annually on January 1st and July 1st in the amount of $100,000. The fiscal year of the SLG ends on December 31st, 2016. How much of the expenditures would be recognized in fiscal year 2016? Only the July 1st interest payment of $100,000 would be recognized based on the rule we've looked at for modified accrual accounting interest in principle for debt service funds. Re resources may come from two sources. Tax supported debt, taxes levied by the debt service fund, taxes levied by the general fund and transferred to the debt service fund, special taxes restricted to the payment of debt, or other means of financing, for example, special assessments. GASB requires debt service funds be established when legally required or when financial resources are being accumulated for principal and interest payments maturing in future years. GASB recommends a single debt service fund for all debt service by property taxes. Governments should hold the number of funds to a minimum. There is a comprehensive example on pages 249 to 252 of the text. Budgets are least common for debt service funds because if the debt service fund receives funds from other funds, uh, the general fund, then the other fund maintains controls and thus budgets the transfer for payment of interest in principal. Of course, there's an exception. If resources are derived from special taxes or assessments, then a debt service fund appropriations budget enhances control. Tax supported debt, two types, serial bonds, regular or deferred, and term bonds. Serial bonds, the principal matures in annual installments. For serial bonds, the amount budgeted for revenues or interfund transfers in is usually just what is needed that fiscal year for matured principal and interest. Advantage, these are self-amortizing. No sinking fund is needed. Term bonds, principal matures in one lump sum at the end of the bond term. These are not used as frequently for municipal financing as serial bonds. Disadvantages, usually requires a sinking fund and therefore investment management. Sinking fund investments are reported at fair value. Changes in fair value reported as a component of investment earnings. And of course, there are more complex accounting issues than serial bonds.